Hey, it's Beyond the Altar, the first ever podcast with me, Tim Burns, along with Pastor Justin and Pastor Dane. This is our first opportunity to introduce what's going to be going on here. Uh, why did we think of uh, doing a podcast anyway? I think the reason that we're looking to do a podcast is just to find another way to connect with people as, as you're pondering where your faith meets real life issues. Like I think sometimes faith seems like a relevant Sunday morning church thing, but then you get into Monday and you're like, how, how does this apply? You know, bringing faith out of Sunday morning only. Yeah. We uh, like to joke around that we're the church that has fun and uh, we want people to know that uh, we're regular people just like everybody else and, and like to enjoy life too. I want to ask the stupid questions that people might yeah. ask. Sounds great. And put the pastors on the spot at some Good. point. Good. But first, uh, I think just as an introduction to uh, all of us, you know, uh, first of all, why me? And I have been playing organ here uh, on and off for a number of years, more this this year. I'm a former radio guy. Sometimes and, you have uh, socks. Sometimes you have shoes. You know, uh, the socks are becoming a thing now. Yeah. And I post yeah. some of the, the organ playing and the organ tutorial have been some of the most watched That's things cool. yeah. on my channel. So if we have to open the show with some sort of organ theme, we'll work oh. on that for the next episode. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> so... I didn't set out to be a radio guy. We've talked about this. I was going to be a band director. That's what I went to college for. Uh, were you always like you knew we're going to be pastors? Went right into the seminary. Nope. No. Nope. Uh, I started out thinking I was going to be an engineer and make lots of money and uh, maybe a doctor or a lawyer. Uh, and then went to school and hated en engineering and. Uh, <laughs> kind of stunk at pre-med. So uh, then I got this kind of calling like, hey, what are you going to do with your life and do something meaningful? And I had a pastor who reached out to me and said, thought I'd make a great pastor and the rest is history. So, so you failed at anything else. Yeah, well, yeah. you know, just like you, I guess. <laughs> the jury's still out yeah. as yeah. to whether the king yeah. line work here. Yeah. And uh, how about you, Justin? Were you always going to be a pastor? No, not always going to be a pastor. I went to school for, for political science and government. Uh, I've been to grad school actually a couple of times. So it's like I, I went to college thinking poli-sci. Then, well, let's maybe seminary. Nope, grad school. Nope, that didn't work. Then the seminary, finished seminary, was a pastor for a while, went back to grad school again for political science. And so in some ways, kind of like that calling that you're like, oh, maybe I could try something else. No, that doesn't quite seem right. So not all that unusual or different than what, what Dane was talking about. My thing while taking education courses at Concordia was I was working at a radio station to help pay. And my calling was journey foreigner mm. on jovi mm -hmm. like this yeah. is cool this yeah. is way more fun yeah. and that's where i took my right turn can you do that on the organ is that possible to do like journey on oh the organ? totally yeah i'm right. doing uh i feel like don't stop believing would be appropriate yeah uh, i would go for that yeah, yeah. okay so uh, all right none of us uh, did what we set out to do but i think we're all storytellers and it seems like Pastors have a way of finding a, a verse and maybe even a, a sermon or a, a children's message out of almost any topic. I have one for you. <laughs> so on Saturday, uh, March 30th, it was National I Am In Control Day. I'll start thinking. How can okay. I make a so yeah. Maybe children's. Oh, right. I relate most to the children's messages. Yeah. Most people most. do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. So this day came out of and i don't know how old you guys are very yeah old. Um, ancient reagan assassination attempt old oh, Where, did I they pull in the tv that. on a cart to, yeah right 81 yeah uh, a little bit before before us but, <laughs> but i've seen it on like yeah, you know the history know channel yes yeah. yeah well after that assassination attempt uh the secretary of state at the time alexander haig went public and said I am in control from the White House. Right. Yeah. George, and the media was like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. We've got a vice, vice president. president Bush yeah. didn't like that. Yes. Right? Yeah. Yes. And so Vice President Bush was on his way saying, hey, wait a minute. I'm going to be. So he he kind of took that back. Haig did. Uh -huh. But that became known as I am in control day. But it uh -huh. might be a nice theme for a, a children's message 
whether it's what we thought we were going to do in college or an illness or a relationship issue, we're not always in control. Does, mm -hmm. it, does that make a, yeah. mm -hmm. a, a sermon or a, a child's message? Where would you go with that? <laughs> I can, <laughs> first, I can first, try. Yeah, okay. uh, I think like, I love the old saying that every time we have plans, God laughs. And I think we have these ideas in our head that like, I'm in control of my life. I know exactly where I'm going. And that's when we're 15, 16. And then we get to 18 and the plans have totally changed. And then we get to 22 and they change again. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes I think our control is much less than we think we have mm -hmm. over things. I don't travel a, a ton, right? Like I think, you know, there's not a whole lot about being a pastor that requires me to get on airplanes and travel a lot. So when I do it, like I feel fairly, you know, comfortable, but there's a little anxiety there when you, when you sit down in the plane and realize like, I have no control over what's happening right now. Especially when you hear the doors are flying off of airplanes. Right. Like, yeah. Yeah. So like statistically though, like that is a safer method to travel than when I drive my car. Yeah. And I feel like I have a lot more control there. And my car is safer than a bicycle, right? Mm -hmm. And the most dangerous way to travel is to walk. So like when I have the most control over everything, that's actually where it's the most dangerous. But I never feel that way because I'm in total control when I'm walking. And if I give up a little get on a bike, a little more anxiety and you know, so I've always been really fascinated by that. And I think that kind of works the same way with how we live our lives, right? Like when we feel like we're in control, we feel really comfortable. Are we really? Maybe, maybe not. Is it dangerous? Probably. But I think it's, you know, some of those times like being able to recognize, hey, we're not really in control of everything that that drives us to feel anxious. But maybe that's not always a bad place to be as we learn to depend on each other and 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 on god and, and asking god for assistance in those moments some people may know uh my situation in the last couple of months because after 29 years i thought you know what five more and i can probably be done and then that was kind of pulled out from under me and uh it it only took me a couple of days though to just say well you know what I do have control of is the relationships that I made with listeners and clients at that time. And I'm going to take that and still keep my brand alive. It, it remains to be seen exactly now where this path leads me, but I'm doing a lot of cool things like this. Yeah. And for uh, some other people too, helping them edit and a lot of projects that's been kind of fun. And I've had to let go and say, I'm going to enjoy the ride. Mm -hmm. Is it a little dangerous? Maybe. Could it crash? Maybe. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, if I can make it through the next five years, uh, then I think we'll be all right. right yeah. and so your life is the children's sermon. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I'm often childlike anyway in my attitudes and my jokes a little bit. As uh, I think a lot of people appreciate your childlikeness and that and that's a compliment yeah. again you said you like to have fun mm -hmm. talk about that where did that come from uh, where we don't have to be so stoic and serious mm -hmm. all the time i think throughout uh bible we can use that as an example jesus is kind of makes fun of his disciples from time to time and the disciples can be dumb as rocks and Jesus still puts up with them. Right. Um, and this is kind of like something that we talk about quite frequently of like, I can only be who I am and I'm not a super serious person that's going to, you know, um, be talking about God every other word sort of thing. Where I can just be me and Dane and how he interacts with the world and and the most frequent compliment I get is that, like, you're authentic. You, mm -hmm. You're you like one of us. And I think, like, that's that's the whole point, too, is, like, being real, being authentic, being relevant. So often, I think people grow up with these preconceived notions of what a pastor is supposed to be, what a church is supposed to be, and, and it doesn't interact with real life. Um, you know, how many times have we had conversations where we're meeting strangers, we're getting to know them, things are going fine. And then they're like, what do you do? And you're like, uh, I'm a pastor. And they're like, oh, sorry, I said, <laughs> like, you know, we can't do that. Right. And it's like, right. No, like, 
while drinking a craft beer on right. the yeah, sidewalk. Yeah, right, yeah. Like, you can't do that. Right. And Jesus, Jesus was a real person. Jesus came to interact with real people. So like trying to be something that we're not, as Dane just said, like yeah. seems real dumb, you know, not just as us as individual pastors, but I think for all Christians and, and all followers of Jesus. You make me think of this story uh, when I was in my first call as a pastor. I started off the sermon with this Lewis Black bit where he's talking about Starbucks and how many Starbucks there are. I thought this was hilarious. I got crickets, right? Oh. Uh, like a month later, I'm talking to these two confirmation students about this, and they're like, oh, yeah, I remember that. We were trying so hard not to laugh. Oh, because like, you can't laugh in church. Who taught you this? Like, pretty sure God laughs at us all the time, so... I hear that about uh, friends I have in the teaching profession. Mm -hmm. Oh, to be seen out at the American Legion or even out grocery shopping. Am I being examined? Do you feel that in the public sometimes? I don't know. I think maybe I've grown more comfortable the, the more years I've done it. Sometimes it's kind of funny because you get kids that are just like... Oh my gosh, it's like, it's Pastor Dane. <laughs> He's at Cashwise. He goes to Cashwise like yeah. I do, you yeah, know? Yeah. So they get yeah. excited about it. But I don't know. I mean, there's been some times where, like, you know, you run into a member at the liquor store or something like that. And it's kind of like, well, if you're here, then I'm okay. Yeah. Like, but it must be all right. Yeah. yeah. I got to tell you, the a church I belong to in Montevideo, I, uh, the, my first run in with the pastor was coming out of the liquor store with a case of Leiden Kugels under each oh, arm. I was like, I want to go to that church. <laughs> Where's that guy? Yeah. But you know, you bring up the being authentic. I think we have that in, in common is uh, if anybody has seen the video I posted post, not release, not being brought on board, the new ownership of the radio station. I said, I am the same Tim on the air as I am when you see me in Target. Yeah. And I think that's why so many people just uh, resonated with that and related to that and appreciated that. I'm sure I would think that uh, a church member would appreciate that yeah. from you guys as well. Mm -hmm. Most. Yeah. I mean, you always have people who aren't quite sure because this isn't what church was 50 years ago for them. But uh, I don't know. We just keep continuing to be us. And um, yeah. It's pretty fun to have the response we get to that, even from a lot of people who church is very different than 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. And they're like, we kind of like this. How we didn't used to laugh or we thought it was supposed to be so serious. Yeah, that's right. right. Why are, yeah. Why? Why are yeah. Where is this coming from? And I think like, you know, the more that you're authentic, and I think this is true for you too, right? The more real Tim that you bring. Yeah you know, the more real we bring in church, then like the less people might be surprised to see us at Cashwise or the less, you know, self-conscious I'm going to be running into someone at a liquor store because I don't feel like I, I have to be that fake person because I've just never been the fake person. Or um, more likely to either come to the church because you're like them or come to you when they're feeling out of control, which yeah. is sort of the theme yeah. here. I got to say one way that you can take control of helping this podcast is that whatever platform it's on, and there may be several, yeah. like it, love it, comment on it, share it, uh, subscribe to it maybe as a possibility, mm -hmm. because uh, all of those algorithms help put it in front of more people. Yeah, nice. And if it's to have legs for the future, uh, we'd appreciate yeah. your help in that way. And that doesn't cost you anything. Right. Yeah. We want Alexander Haig to see this at some yeah. point. Right? Yeah. yeah. Is he still alive? I don't think he uh, is. Probably, probably not. not. He'll see it wherever he is. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Uh, so we'll uh, see you again, I'm sure. There's a, a plan for several of these as we continue to get to know each other and you and uh, have some fun and and the promise is it's not always going to be churchy no probably yeah. not this might be the yeah. most churchy right we talked about yeah. the organ right off and, the bat. yeah I'd be excited to talk talk twins or vikings next yeah. Time. yeah i'm supposed to be the straight guy that that leads you down the difficult paths of yeah. not churchiness but we'll always uh, find an appropriate theme beyond the altar that's what we're calling it for now yeah we'll see you again yeah.